Welcome back to the Past Live. Thank you all for joining me tonight for the return of the monthly series titled Needle in a Wax Stack. And that's a series where I desperately rip open older and very affordable boxes. A lot from our youth, most of our youth, looking for these very difficult to find autographs and things of that nature. And tonight we're heading back to 1992, a box of Upper Deck Jumbo before us here. And I've never opened a box of Jumbo before from this year in particular. So maybe we have a better chance of finding it in Jumbo. I have no idea, but the Bench Morgan Auto is the big hit out of 92 Upper Deck. They hand sided 2,500 cards, both of them together. And they sell for about 200 bucks on eBay. And you're probably thinking, let's just go on eBay and buy one for 200 bucks. But where is the fun in all of that? This box cost me, I think, 30 bucks. I picked it up on eBay after a guy at a local antique mall would not budge on his inflated box that he had there for the last two years. And I even offered more than what they were selling for on eBay. But that is the way it goes sometimes. I think we have like 20 packs inside of here. This is a high series box. And there's 23 cards in each pack. And I'm hoping we may we'll even see one of the, uh, the SP1, SP2, actually three and four from 92. Um, Deion Sanders and also one of my fa personal favorites, the Mr. Baseball, Tom Selleck, and the Big Hurt. So let's pull the packs out. And these seem to be $2.19 back in 1992. Not sure you could quite get the same amount for them by today's standards. And I'm not sure how many of these are still left in packs out there, these autographs. But um, I've never seen one in person at card shows or anything else. So it, uh, it's a definitely a difficult pull. Paul also 30 bucks. I would have also considered buying a Ken Hill 1989 Donruss as well. <laughs> Joseph C's in the house. Joel Schultz says, you inspired me to go for a complete run of Griffey Donruss League cards. That's a sick goal to have, man. Never Die says, what was he selling the box for? I think he had it for like 55 bucks. And uh, like I said, it's been in the showcase in there for literally like three years. And his wax is like crazy. Like it's literally three to four times what it really should be. And uh, I was like, hey, man, like I just want to let you know if you're taking offers or if you're or if you'll consider offers, I was like, I'll give you 35 bucks for this box. I can get it on eBay right now for $30 shipped, which is what I paid for it. And um, he, I think he said he wanted like 45 or something like that. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to pay more for it. I would have rather have given him my money, but wasn't the case. 91 Fleer, $40, Paul L. says. So high series pack, 23 cards inside of here. Let's swash buckle our way through these packs. And the key rookies in 92, Mini Ramirez is obviously the biggest one. We also have Sean Green in here. And I don't know if these are one per pack. We might see some cool inserts, scouting reports, Royce Clayton. I never really cared for him when I was a kid. And I don't really know why, but SR6. 30 bucks for the rare golden pants. <laughs> 89 Kevin Bass. Rob Venture, the one thing about, it, about Upper Deck, the 90s, is the collation is pretty awful. And all the cards will be flipped upside down and everything else. There's a Pedro Martinez. Now, this is not a Pedro Martinez rookie card. Some people might try to pass that off as one. I feel like their cards stick to, stuck together here. But his rookie is a 91 Upper Deck Final Edition. That is his only true rookie card. This is a fluke. Second year, Pedro Martinez. That's Rob Deere. Dave Martinez still looking for his error card out of 90 Fleer. Joseph C. in the house says, should do 92 tops and needle on a wax stack. <laughs> Searching for anything worth more than a dime. I absolutely love that. I used to love 92 Tops back in the day, too. And to be honest, nowadays, I, I really hate that set. I just think it's such a bland design, and there's there's no insert cards. There's no Tops gold. There's literally nothing. There's a Manny Ramirez rookie card, and that is about it. Pete Shirk, but uh, some people give those away on uh, different channels and whatnot. Rookie Threats. We got Brian Jordan dead center there. I appreciate that, Joseph C. I always want to call you Wally Moon because of that emoji and because of the other platform. Joe's card crew on the house, too, says, I randomly saw some baseball packs, maybe Don Russ, at the checkout counter sheets. Kind of weird. I was in a hurry and depressed <laughs> heading into work. That's pretty crazy if you saw Don Russ, though. Sheets does have, um, they have tops there now. I was there last night, and I bought a pack of 2023 Series 1. Still trying to find Adley Rushman, base rookie. And 
I've opened, I don't know, five blasters and three or four hangers, and I've still yet to pull his base card out of there, which sucks because I need that for my rookie box, obviously. I'd rather pack pull it. There's Donovan Osborne. Card always kind of creeped me out. Apocalyptic Sky in the background and Frank Viola. But yeah, Joe, they do sell them in like Sunoco. Sheets has them. I, I bought packs of Update there, which is freaking awesome. Like, I love it because it reminds me of like 1990 when you go into a gas station and like beg your dad or mom for a pack of cards at the counter. Because it was so abundant, but at the same time, that just means it's sort of junk wax all over again because they're everywhere. Joe Beast is Lizard of Mall has so many hobby boxes in the back of the store. It's nuts. I saw, and I, I've seen videos about people buying them there, but I didn't know they had hobby boxes until recently. I'm like, that's crazy. Tango says, maybe we'll see another multiple hologram card. Another scouting report here. So these are one per jumbo pack. Barry Jones is now two packs in a row, so that means Paul Elgs has to put him on the Omen watch list. Luis Soho and, and my Butterfingers dropping everything. Pat Borders. Glenn Davis, Andy Ashby, also not his rookie card. Felix Fermin leaping through the air. Matt Noakes, who I also did not like as a kid. There's Paul O'Neill from Mikey G if he's in here. Jeff Reardon, some corner kind of wild antics happening there. There's Mel Rojas. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know how people can open like an entire case of upper deck. That would drive me nuts. Steve Sachs, Candy on any even slike. Diamond skills. I used to like those cards when I was a kid. Frank Viola, two packs in a row. Jose Rio, and there's Turk brushing his teeth in the dugout in between innings. Very interesting character, Turk was. Got a nice pair of legs here interviewing Jack Morris. Can't say I've ever seen that car before. And Mike Morgan ends that pack. So two packs in, no sign of any rookies, no sign of any short prints, and no freaking sign of that autograph. Lids is a huge window decal. This tops hobby sold here. Yeah, I never really pay attention to it. There's a lids in a mall, but I don't really go there too often. Archie starts his pack off. Scouting reports. Is Pee Wee flirting with Carmen? Pee Wee's actually on the floor now amidst all of the mess down here. So I've made some progress. For anyone that actually gives a crap about my progress on cleaning things up, we're we're still working on things here. But um, So there's a, that's some stuff being sorted now. But as we get on here, <laughs> there's Carmen. Say hello to Carmen. She is with us. Always looking fine. And I haven't decided where she is going to hang in uh, this room yet, but uh, yeah, it's always a work in progress. There's a bunch of wax down there that are kind of hidden. So, actually on the vacation from work next week, so I might actually make some progress around here, but I wouldn't hold me to that, though. And Greg Olson <laughs> looks perfectly fine to me. <laughs> Dave Magadan, that's just, that's all I like to hear. I did that. Floyd Fats says progress just means he got rid of the 91 Donovan's wrappers. <laughs> that's kind of that's how I look at it too. Like, oh, I cleaned up all those wrappers from last night's rip. All right, we're good. To me, that is progress, but there's so much to do. So much. Like, I have a hard time throwing away all these empty box all these boxes that I've opened. And um I'd probably show you that side of the room, but it's a giant mess too. But all the boxes I've ripped open on this channel and so I got back to the hobby, basically, that I've hung on to. Jim Abbott, Porter Card. I like having them. I think they're cool display, but uh, at some point you have to just be like, all right, you can't keep every single one of these. Keep like the, the better ones, but I don't know. <laughs> That's probably why my house looks the way it does. Alex Cole, Arthur Rhodes. I think I was pretty pumped on him back in the day. Harold Baines, Tom Harrigan says, I think I hear Pee Wee coughing from one of those <laughs> 25,000 1990 Tops commons. So many 1990 Tops commons. Luckily, I've found some people that are putting together that set, so I've been able to unload a few of them. George Brett, Portrait Card, Gino Petrali, having the time of his life in the dugout. Joe Susarski looks furious. So he is literally right about to put a hit out on somebody. I'm not really sure who it was, but maybe it was Keith Miller. Jose Rio, Grand Theft. Henderson, that car was always pretty sick, though. I like that one. Eddie Murray, Mike Kelly. We have a rookie card here. Once again, a Turk. Two packs in a row, and Sosa. Arthur Rhodes played for 35,000 years. <laughs> he was around for a real, real long time. Fitzy says you're one omen away from Chris Saban not being an omen anymore. 
The omen list is literally endless, but I don't know what's longer, the abandonment list or the omen list. That would be interesting to find that out. Julio Valera. It's a name I've not said in probably 30 years. Starting off, we have Wilfredo Cordero as Paul Neal again. That's not a Wilfredo Cordero rookie card. His rookie card's a 91 upper deck. Cherry Brown. You'll find the, uh, the funny Cecil Fielder chicken card as well. There's Alfredo Griffin, Ricky Jordan, Eddie Murray, portrait card. Jeff King, Eduardo Perez. I remember being so pumped on these prospects cards back in 92. McGee, Terry Pendleton. I think back in 92, like the hot one in Beckett was like the Mark Newfield and Rondell White. Where they're like standing at a bus stop. <laughs> if you guys have seen that card before, it's pretty hilarious. I hope we see it in this box. John Cerruti. Upper Deck always had interesting photos. This is a set with any man like in pain. I don't know if this is that set or not. Very well might be. The, and speaking of hot cards from back then, Pat Listash was the rookie of the year in 92. And uh, back then, I think Beckett listed this as like $2.50. So it was definitely in a top loader and or screw down case. And I think I pack pulled that out of the same pack as my double Mr. Baseball card. There's Melito Perez for Jonathan H. There's a big cat for Corey, who apparently has abandoned us tonight. Tony Gwynn, best hitter, and Matt Stairs. I believe that's a Matt Stairs rookie card. I think he was in 92. Yeah, John Smoltz batting card is in here. I had that card set aside for you for a while to send to you, and then I ended up moving, and everything got misplaced. And it'll forever be misplaced. Paul says, I've watched your channel so much, Joe, that I feel like Greensburg, PA is my second home. <laughs> that is so good. I love that. I freaking love it. One of these days, Joe and I are ripping more yak packs, and I have the notifications turned on on eBay, so when someone lists a box of yak packs, I get notified immediately. But lately, there's no cases. The, the cases have been wiped off the face of the earth, and now there's like single boxes are like 50 bucks a piece, and ain't no one paying 50 bucks for that trash for one box. For a case, I would definitely do it for the fun, but I make it desperate at some point and break down and buy one anyways. Lenny Harris, Warren Newsom. Jerry Burnett's fake rookie card is our 91. <laughs> Carl Tuffy Rhodes. Just make all your women clean. <laughs> it was Ed Woodson for Paul L. Rondell White. Here's another one that was a hot one back in the day. Even though it's not a rookie. Second year Rondell White. Is that two Ed Woodson in the same pack? All right, Paul L. He's already on the oven list, but uh, that explains why. Twice in one pack. Willie Wilson. John Cruck. Oliveris, Cliff Phillips, what is happening, man? And I haven't decided what the future of card sales for me will be, if I'll stick with whatnot or if I will move back to YouTube. And I was talking to I was talking to Corey about that today, and I've put a poll on the Facebook group, obviously, but for those of you that aren't on there, I may move back to YouTube because I miss the entire environment. It's not the same atmosphere on that other app as it is on here. Incavilia Kenny Lofton. I don't know if I've ever seen that Kenny Lofton. That's the second year card. His rookies are 91 final edition. And Danny Gladden, that beautiful mullet flapping in the wind. Tartable, Hebe Brooks. Lance Blankenship, literally Superman pose. Rene Gonzalez being tagged out. And Donovan Osborne to end that pack. Full of chances, whatnot was so much easier as a buyer. Yeah, I might go back and forth between them. As a, as a seller, it's easier to ship things. But uh, like I said, like I miss... The banter, the conversation. We've had some pretty freaking awesome and ridiculous conversations during auctions. I think we can all attest to that. They're not really the same on whatnot. When everyone's buying packs, it just gets, I don't know. I like selling packs on there, but uh, their system is very janky, I think. So we got Roger Sanders scouting reports. Put this whole set together today. SR20, I guess not. This is definitely a Mandela effect. I've never seen this card in my life. It never existed until recently, apparently. David Zancanero. Does anybody know who he is? It's like the face on the side of a milk carton. Never seen that card in my life, and I've opened a ton of 92 per deck. I've seen it for the last 30 years. So... And we got Sean Green, <laughs> Ed Winston proving himself to be a noble omen. So speaking of non-rookie cards, Jim Tome. This is not a rookie. His rookies are 91, also in the final edition set from 91. It's got a crappy cut on it, but I've seen I constantly will always see people passing this off as a rookie card. It's not. Do not be fooled by a snake oil salesman trying to sell you that Tome and Pedro Martinez. Sean Green, this actually is a rookie card, though, and this is one of the better rookie cards you can pull out of here. 
Put that off to the side, even though there's really only one other card that will join that. Trevor Williams is what? Are we still live? I'm having like some sort of crappy signal here. Can you guys still see me? Scott Livingston puffing his chest out. Javier Ortiz. You guys see me again now? Tony Gwynn, Matt Stairs. All right, cool. Yeah, so you're not going to see a Plow King Willie um, ever crashing the whatnot streams. You're not going to see any of that. The best, those people that just came in, the troll bidders that we've all come to love. You're not going to see them over there. So, Dickie Thon. John, <laughs> John Smiley looking absolutely worn down by life. Like, big time. I've never seen that card before, or that picture at least. Joe's card cross is the best. Yeah, the best was, I think he was talking about how he won the lottery or something like that. There's Greg Swindell, of course. He won the lottery, won like, I don't even know what he said. It was a 100,000 bucks, was it more than that on a scratch off? It seemed like he was like some like 12 year old kid that like was just trolling everybody. But you're not going to see those on whatnot. You're not going to, it's not going to happen. At least I doubt it. It's much more difficult. So you missed that aspect in the good times. Sean Smiley hated being a twin. No one he looks beat down. <clears throat> That's what I always thought. I remember hearing that. Scott Livingston. Bench Morgan. Whoa. We got one. It's not the one we're looking for. It's a 45-card insert set. The former Prime Minister of England. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Uh, Bojo. Boris Johnson. <laughs> he definitely did look like Boris Johnson. That's hysterical. Barry Jones, once again, we've seen a lot of that card. He might be deemed an omen tonight at some point, but there's Bench Morgan. It's not the one we're after. It's a 45-card set. The autograph is number 45. But I like now remember, I don't remember everyone seeing those Bench Morgan inserts in 92. It was always Ted Williams. I always got riddled with Ted Williams cards, and like I came to hate them after a while. Andre Dawson. There's TK Glenda Davis. It looks like Willie McGee. Plowking Willie's second coming. Yeah, I unblocked Plowking Willie. And by the way, the unofficial sponsor of this video is, of course, Taco Bell. And this is Dragon Tea, which is probably the best thing you can get there. I used to be a Bob last guy until Dragon Tea came out, and then I converted real quick. So I completed the trifecta today where I went to Chipotle for lunch, and then like two hours later went to Subway, like a true fat slob. And then... I went skating, and then after skating, I went to Taco Bell in a different town. <laughs> so, if I drop dead anytime soon, you'll know why. Ruben Sierra, Paul says the robot gets pissed when you don't say the entire name of the T. <laughs> I feel like he does get real pissed about that. I don't even know what it's called, like Magic Dragon T? I, I have no idea. I just call it Dragon T, and I know I'm shortening it. And um, like I said, boy, did, boy, did the robot really call me out the other day when I went in there? From across the restaurant. There's a Nagel second year along with Mer Merced. Ripkin and Diamond Skills. My friend's song's a new Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> we got Doug Jones, who passed away not too long ago. Kurt Stillwell. Pat Mahomes. Brett Boone, and not his rookie card. Mark Clark. Something about his face that I just cannot tolerate looking at any longer. I don't remember Mark Clark at all. Whatsoever. Does anybody remember him? Because I don't. Pedro Munoz, Bill Picota, and there's Matt Stairs again. Ever have a serious skate injury? I've had, I don't know, I've had plenty. I've, I broke both my wrists like four times each. One time I had two broken wrists and two casts on the same time. That was pretty haggard. I still skate every day. And then I broke my ankle like a couple times, I think, and severely like ruined it a couple times and split my head open. That's staples in my head. <laughs> So, yeah, I've had some. I started doing it back in 1999, so it's been a long time. Now I'm now I'm old, and my body doesn't uh, really care for it that much these days, but I still do it. I just I do it a few times a week. Now it's obviously wintertime, so it's more difficult to get out there. But I still enjoy one of his injuries was at the hands of the mailman. <laughs> Insert never heard of you. It never heard of you. Paul's has been skating as long as I've been alive. Yeah, I guess that's true, huh? It's crazy to think about it that way. Scott Sanderson. Yeah, it's a long time. My very first board was a World Industries Battle 2000 Slick. I'm like, oh, it's a slick deck. That means it's got a special coating on the bottom of it so you can, like, slide parking blocks or rails or whatever easier. And 
It's like, oh, that's so cool. I remember I broke it in half after I got it. I snapped it right down the middle. And then I think my dad helped me wood glue it, which was crazy that you could actually do that. Wood glued it and then skated it for like another three days and snap it in half again. <laughs> Eddie Murray's Todd Zeal. There's that creepy David Zancanaro card, which I can't get over that. I want to know what happened to him. Carlos Berger leaping through the air. And look what we got. Oddball cards. Shane, what is happening, man? It says, hey, Chipotle is mine. Stay with your Taco Bell. <laughs> Matt Stairs, professional hitter. Shane, what is going on, dude? Long time no see, man. If you're not familiar with uh, Oddball Cards, Shane, please uh, check him out. Go over his channel and give him a, a subscribe. I know he's still doing videos regularly. It's been a while since I've commented on your videos, man. I appreciate you coming back over here and hanging out with us. But yeah, Chipotle jumped on that bandwagon. I forget how. I don't even know how I went there. I think I was just like with my, my buddy someday. And if someone could post a link to uh, Shane's channel as well, if you guys haven't seen him. Paul L., if you want to take care of it, since Corey's abandoned me. It's Pat Listash, rookie again. I think I was with my buddy. He's like, just wanted to stop there. I'm like, whatever. This is lame. It's not Taco Bell. And I was, I was like, oh, well, they have Sofritas there. So that's probably a big reason why I go there, because I get that every single time I go. John Patterson, never seen that car before either. Butch Henry, and Vaughn Hayes, rue the day that he was born. Alex says, happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. Happy St. Patty's Day, man. I don't even know when it is. Is that today? Is that tomorrow? I have no idea. Tango says, hipster Taco Bell. <laughs> Something to that Taco Bell that's in uh, Las Vegas. It sounds like a dance party, like 24-7, my buddy told me about. Trevor Williams says, when the air hits your brain, you're never the same. <laughs> Thank you for that, Trevor. Nagel, his hat flying off there. Zeal. Again, I'm surprised that uh, my wrists aren't tired yet from flipping these cards every which way, but I'm sure they will be here pretty soon. Ripken again. Sid Fernandez pondering the meaning of life there, apparently. The, the photos in the back are freaking great. I love them because they're just like, I don't know. Most of them are just so wacky. Joe Oliver... Like, that's a really creepy photo right there. Corey Snyder. I wish it was Corey Snyder's 93 Select. If you don't know what that card is, and you'll know what it is if you look it up. You'll know what I mean by that. Craig Biggio, Steve Decker. Anybody else having serious lag issues? Maybe it's like crap internet because I'm in the dungeon. Charlie Hayes, friend of Stubbs. There's Sid Bream. I like switching up the card orientation as an act of war. John Franco in time of his life. Fridge Polo, you need Pancheros in your life. I've never even heard of that. John H is what not notification? <laughs> and it paid for quantity 13, 19, 1997 Fondest Baseball. Prepare to ship. I feel so bad about that. I don't know how it happened. That's a big reason why I'm kind of bummed too on whatnot. Is like you have to pre program all your stuff. If your finger hits the wrong button, which I don't think it happened in that case, I double checked those, then like somebody, you can't refund people on whatnot at all. I don't think there's any way to do it. I looked into it today and there was no way for me to refund Jonathan H his money for 13 finest packs was like $4 a pack. So that's a lot, that's a lot of money. So I'm going to PayPal him or we're going to work something else out outside of there, but it still sucks. But I was thinking about that. And I was also thinking about earlier, I never opened up Jonathan H's other three packs that he bought. So I had like, I think four packs of these total. And for whatever reason it said 13. And he, there's a link to, um, Oddball Card, Shane's channel. Please check him out if you would be so kind. Thank you for doing that, Paul. Joe's Card. Time, Christian Slater of the or the leader of the Daggers. I mean, he was supposed to like outdo Tony Hawk back then. Gleam the Cube days. Jason Lee was another actor that uh, was extremely good, and I think he's still involved. He bought out Stereo. I mean, he started Stereo and then bought it back, I think, in 2013. It was I don't know, probably a lot longer ago than that, but... Yeah, <laughs> the da leader of the daggers. I gotta watch that again. So we'll open these packs right now on air. Joe's Card Corral made a video not too long ago, too. And uh, probably can post a link to that. Edgar Martinez, Jermaine Allensworth, cringe with the name there, and Greg Jeffries. So I did not open for Jonathan H. Maybe we'll find like a crazy refractor in here that will make up for. The mishap. Andy Bennis, Rafael Palmero, and there's Paul Wilson. A 
a little intermission here from 92 per deck. Is that the same exact pack? Paul Wilson in the back. <laughs> what the hell? Andy Bettis, Rafael Palmero, and Paul Wilson. So, insult to injury, Jonathan H. got screwed again. The same exact freaking pack twice in a row. Two out of three packs. What can you do about it except sip some dragon tea? And uh, try to forget. That's, <laughs> that's, that's awful. <laughs> Jack Armstrong. Bip Roberts. Gary Carter. Steve Saxigan. Seen a lot of that card. Rookie Threats. Tartable. Rene Gonzalez and Chad Curtis. Who, I don't know if Chad Curtis is still in prison. Can anyone confirm that? He was doing prison for like domestic abuse. I feel like this box is taking a while to go through. Which is fine, but um, I think it's because all the cards are flipped up every which way. I don't really care for the scouting report cards too much. Dave Gallagher doing some sort of little shimmy there. Interesting card. Very interesting. Checklist card. Wilfredo Cordero. Still no sign of Mayor Ramirez. The best skater of all time is Christian Slater. Christian Slater was awesome back then. He definitely was. Two Dave Gallagher's one pack puts you on the Omen watch list in my book. Tony Gwynn, there's Rob Dibble. Used to hate the hell out of his guts back in the day. Dave Henderson, I don't really know why either. Orsalak, Tom Hankey, Paul says Shane Cross. There's Scott Scudder. Yeah, Shane Cross was awesome too. Frank Tanana. I just don't know what the purpose of flipping all these cards around. It had to have been more trouble than not to flip these cards every which way like this. Eddie Murray, is it like a suspense factor? I don't know. I don't think we ever will know. There's Jose Rio, Bill Swift, the club somebody, and Pedro Munez again. Pinstriped Trail Beaver says, I think the entire studio session from Curry Pocket shirtless card <laughs> is what can be found on Mr. Heron's disc. Would not be surprised. Like the, the negatives... Of like that photo shoot from like ninety one score, the dream team. You got like topless Canseco, you got topless Hedrickson, the topless Puckett. Who else? I don't know. I don't know what they were going for in that set, but quite a few of them in there. Especially Puckett. Like, what are you thinking? I think Puckett is he, is he wearing a tie on there? <laughs> Something ridiculous like that. Pretty sure. <laughs> it came to me in a dream recently. A Paul Harris disc is still with us. And I gotta figure out how to get an external A drive. This is an this is an A drive disc, I believe. When I searched on eBay for like external A drives, it's a plug-in through USB to your laptop. I like get all this crap that pops up. So I'll buy one if it's like 20 bucks. I don't know if I'd really want to spend more than that for something I use one time, but then again, it might unlock the secrets of the freaking universe. And I know people have reached out to Paul Heron on Facebook. I don't think we got responses yet, though. I know they're being posted in the group where we were harassing some guy named Paul <laughs> Paul Heron about this disc that may or may not even belong to him. We don't know where this came from. It came from a collection I bought in Pittsburgh that was didn't have a Michael Jordan rookie card in it, contrary to what the guy told me. Jim told me probably the best card in the set, honestly. <laughs> Would you like to play a nice game of chess? <laughs> it has, like, Oregon Trail on it for DOS. You never know. It doesn't have to be bad. Or it's probably going to be something that you boot up and, and within seven days you're going to die type deal. Roberto Almar, Luis Soho, which is flailing around in the air. And we got Manny Ramirez rookie card, I think. That looks like it to me. No. You freaking Tom Nevers. Chris Hammond. Card looks very similar. I don't think Manny's got a fence in the background, though. Brian L. Williams. Damn you, Tom Nevers. Juan Samuel. What the hell is that? What is this random pink, this paint spot on Juan Samuel's eyeball? It's in the middle of a freaking pack. I'm obsessed with that. All right, that's going into the Oddities collection, the abnormality collection of cards from packs that I pull that have blemishes like that that shouldn't have that, that I am absolutely obsessed with. So, and it's like running his eyeball, too. It's, it's like Juan Samuel freaking. Cyborg <laughs> T1000 <laughs> golf ball in the eye air. I love it. Travis he said $10,000 on eBay. It probably could fetch that. It's true one of one. Todd Froworth. So like he's squeezing one out. Milt Kyler. 
<laughs> Paul Heron's good. Yeah, whatever happened, Paul Heron's, that, that summoned that. There's John smiling. I can't help but turn this car over now. Worn down by life. Sheffield, there's Greg Swindell again. Still no sign of Manny Ramirez. Butch Henry, Charlie Hayes, and Jack Armstrong. Floyd Fences, so if Topps considers Olympic cards rookies, do World Baseball Classic cards count as rookie cards? I say he's holding a 2009 U Darvish World Baseball Classic Bowman. That's a good question, man. I don't know. That is definitely a good question. What does everybody else think about that? I mean, I guess it could be. I guess it definitely could be considered a rookie. I don't think I've ever seen that U Darvish before. 2009. His rookie was, what, 2013, I think? Lofton, scouting report. Appreciate that, Fluid Fan. Jeff Mace, it seemed like it should count. Yeah, I guess he would count it. We have a Jeter rookie coming up. Turns out to be a BJ Wallace. Corey still has that in a one-touch, too. Smell looks hungover and or stoned. He definitely looks like he had a long night at the pub and or a strip club. Rex Hudler, Eric Davis leaping around. 2012, yeah, maybe it was 2012, actually. I can picture it, but... Yeah, it was 2012 or 2013. Barry Jones, there is Crime Dog for Corey. Will Clark for Willie565, if he's still watching these videos. At least it's extended. It's at the least it'd be an extended rookie. Yeah, I could definitely see that for sure. I'm going to agree with that. Sweet Lou Whitaker, Pete Harnish, Scott Scudder again, getting bombarded by Omens. That's a cool. Shot of Kevin Seitz there. I like that. Not nearly as cool as the cyborg edition of Juan Samuel, but we'll take it. Bip Roberts, Billy Kruger. Paul L. now singing bingo. There's a second year Lofton, Hughie Brooks, and there's Mike Kelly. It's like he means freaking business there. So, what do we like? Three quarters away through the box. We got three, four, eight packs left in this box. Like I said, this is a fun rip for anybody because you can go buy boxes for 30 bucks and chase down this autograph card. Not like buying modern cards today where you spend... I don't even know what... What did the 2023 Jumbo cost? Like a few hundred bucks? I have no idea, but... Willie Banks. The guy I did not want to see when I'm opening 91 Leaf. I'll tell you that right now. There's that creepy little shimmy Dave Gallagher again. My favorite rips are when the omens are in full force. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of them like that retro wax video I filmed last night. There's all kinds of omens in that. Like, it kept coming out. Relentless onslaught of omens. There's Tom Goodwin. Jose Uribe. I can't believe that Jose Uribe still has that craze to it. Like, it's it's died down a little bit, but it's still going. People are still buying that 90 Fleer Uribe. Insanity. Dave Hollins, Joe Oliver. Is Joe Oliver the same one in 92 score where he's like literally having like a coronary on the card, grabbing his chest? Is that Joe Oliver? I feel like it is. Tony Gwynn, Kevin Eckie, Lance Johnson, Palmero. Do I know the 2004 Padek had an SP7 of LeBron James? You know what? I just found that out not too long ago, Fitzy. That card's pretty sick. It's, uh, it's worth some money, too. I never knew that existed. And I forget. Somebody said something about it. Maybe it was my buddy mentioned him like you're crazy man lebron james doesn't have that that doesn't exist and i looked it up i'm like wow that's pretty wild jeff reed that's who it is bob ojeda and tommy lasorda chad curtis once again van slyke ruben amaro jr mike kelly candy Yachty, carlos hernandez donovan osborne it's not a rookie card either and ends that pack so we got, what, six, you know, seven packs left. I don't even count how many were in there. 20, maybe? But so far, Sean Green, rookie. No short prints. Only one Johnny Bench insert in that creepy cyborg. A lot of the same exact cards. Barry Jones. Paul, I'll put Barry Jones on the omen list because I'm real sick and tired of seeing him, and it's like the fourth or fifth time in this box. Dickie Thon. Skeeter Barnes, I've said that name in a long time. There's that Barry Jones. I hate that card, too. I hated that card as a kid. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the blurry background, but it just pissed me the hell off as a kid, and I don't like it. So that alone will maybe put him on the open list. Jay Bell, Hal Morris, 
Dickie Thon. Two times in one pack, it definitely is. Doug Henry. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the same cards in the same pack. Brady Anderson. We got two more coming up. Chuck McElroy, it looks like. Maybe not. That's pretty crazy. Similar card, but different players. Louis Rivera, Greg Myers. Paul Else is at five now. I don't know. Barry Jones. He's got to go on there though. Bill Landrum. Donovan Osborne's been showing up an awful lot lately, too. I feel like we've seen that five times. Dave Martinez. The creepy 70s porno stash doesn't help that card. <laughs> That's definitely true, too. Nick West says, I know one thing one doesn't have, and look at all those glorious emojis. It's still need to be updated. Mikey G is probably literally ruined it. Not put Willie McGee on there yet, but he's going to be added on there tonight. Ken Hill shows up, of course. Gary Carter, Rick Sutcliffe, and there's Bobby Bonilla. Sherry Manley with the Don West emojis. I gotta, we got to put some more on there. I think it will allow me to put more on there than there are now. At one point, I think you're capped. And, uh, and we, gotta, we definitely have to add some new ones to it. Like Taco Bell. Taco Bell Robot needs an emoji. I'm, I'm taking a picture of him. Next time I go in there, I will go in there tomorrow and get a picture with him or of him. And uh, he will be an emoji. It's happening. It is freaking happening. Felix from in emoji. <laughs> I used to hate Felix from in so bad. I hated him. Here's Derek Bell. Not speaking of players we hated, or people that we hated. Taco Bell tonight. I did go to Taco Bell a little bit ago. I was going to do a live stream at like 8 o'clock, and I'm like, you know what? I need to go to Taco Bell. It's been a couple of days since I've gone there. And by a couple of days, I think like one. Todd Zeal, Warren Newsom, Mikey G. <laughs> Mikey G. What is happening, man? I was hoping that you were lurking in the background. I was talking directly to you. And Willie McGee, what card was it again? Was it a photo from 83 Tops from his rookie? Or is it 83 Fleer? Because he's got a bunch of different filthy-looking cards. Very, very filthy. Chris Donalds. I think I called him Chris O'Donnell in a rip last night. Did I do a rip last night? Yeah, I opened a bunch of packs. What am I thinking? Drebeck, Bruce Ruffin, Neil Heaton. Paul Ossenmacher goes in the trash. Brian Harper, Wade Boggs, the pinstripe trail beaver says for the <laughs> for the investigation into Paul Heron. Thank you so much for that, man. That will definitely I will put that towards getting a uh, external disc. Paul Heron's disc. The world's got to see what's on there. We have to. I, I think I saw some on there for like I don't know. I think they were on like twenty bucks, and I was like, I don't want to buy the wrong thing. I need to be sure that I know what I'm getting. So I need like an A drive, but I don't, I don't think they call them that anymore. I don't think you can just go on eBay and type in like external A drive discs. I tried that and found a bunch of other, other like floppy discs and stuff like that. It's not a floppy disc. At least I don't think that's what it's called. It's not floppy. Donovan Osborne is officially an omen because that's like literally the tenth time that we pulled that card and I'm over it. Turk Wendell, I don't think that I want to put him on the omen list because he was a pretty wild child and I liked him for that. But, yeah, we're going to unveil what's on here. I'm going to do, there's a couple of things I'm going to do tonight. I am going to make that Willie McGee emoji. And then I'm going to go on eBay. USB floppy drive on Amazon. Somebody send me a link to it. If you're a technology guru, then uh, <laughs> send me a link. Post the link on the, fa on the Facebook group. Some something so that I can go on there tonight. And buy it. And we will see what's on Paul Heron's disc. And it's like one of those things now where it's been hyped up for so long. Like, do we really want to do that to ourselves? Do we want to view what's on that disc? It's going to be a freaking live stream, too. Like, well, I'm not looking at that without you guys. Get, like, kicked off YouTube. <laughs> kicked off YouTube and, like, Department of Homeland Security shows up my house. Royce Clayton again, that insert. <laughs> what's on the disc? Chris George. That creepy... Creepy looking card. It's like a Joker smile. Molito Perez. Does he have two cards in this set? Did he get traded? I swear he's got two cards. I swear we saw him earlier. Might be because Jonathan H is in here. What is that? Somebody has a random dollar bill they're holding out. That looks like. That girl looks pissed. I'm surprised there's that many people that want Molito Perez's autograph. Jonathan H is probably in that picture as a kid. I'm sure. Chuck McElroy, there is Jeremy Hernandez. Still no sign of Cecil Fielder. Tony Phillips. 
anticipation for that is so high, no matter what the content is, <laughs> it will be <laughs> it will be an abject disappointment. I know that's what I'm saying. What if it's really me- what if it's really messed up? OJ Simpson putting on some gloves, looking into the camera, wiggling a knife, and then cuts off when he walks through the house. That'd be crazy. Something like that happened on there. See, <laughs> put on his floppy. Paul's of imaginary tops turn back to clock. Dick Hauser getting tossed. <laughs> I hate that card. What is this? Oh, man, we pulled the Ben McDonald. That is sick. I did not think that you could pull this out of regular packs. I was, like, literally thinking that this was in um, minor league upper deck, which I have a box of those, too, which we'll be opening it for turn back the clock rip sometime soon. But I think I might have this card in my PC, like, or just from a collection I bought out. I'm like, this is cool because I remember pulling this as a, as a kid. It's a Ben McDonald hologram. You can see it better right there. Pretty freaking crazy, though. Paul says, what the hell is that? Yeah, it's numbered CP3. Not real sure of the odds, but college player of the year. I thought these were literally inserted into the the minor league set and packs. Uh, It's pretty freaking cool, though. But CP3, where are the rest of them? Are there there more? Is it a whole Ben McDonald insert set? I honestly don't know. At least I forget if I did know at one point. So I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know if it's really anything you should get too excited about, but I guess I'm easy to please. There's John Patterson again. Chad Curtis is on the Omen list now because I'm tired of seeing that freaking card. So Eric Davis also has two cards in here. He was traded to the Dodgers, apparently. Kyle Abbott, checklist card. Eddie Taubensee, best power. Will Clark, and there's that John Smiley. Walking through the alleyway with a cup for change in his hand. This is a cello pack of 1990 Tops. It's all about <laughs> what could be in there, theoretically, not what's actually in there. A name on the front card. It's very, very true. Nick wants to sleeve it up. And I definitely should sleeve that up, huh? Yeah, we gotta get a sleeve on that Ben McDonald before I get my greasy Taco Bell prints all over it. It's a pretty cool card, though. I'm sure you can probably go on eBay and buy that for a dollar easily, but still need to pull something like that. Joe's card crosses the, the disc is almost overtake the, <laughs> overtake the G.I. Joe video. It honestly is. People are more hyped on that for the, than the G.I. Joe video. I don't really blame them. we got four packs left for this rip. And still no Many or Mirrors rookie card, which I don't know what's, what gives with that, but there's that Julio Valera again. The coalition in this box is crap. Make you suffer just to go through it anyways and flip all the cards over. Sean Dunstan, Porter Carters, Eric Karos having the time of his life. Without Mike Piazza, too. So that might have been before they met, I'm thinking. I don't know. Burnett's, Greg Jeffries, Jim Tomey, fake rookie card. We've seen five. Well, look at that. I got the short print of Tom Selleck. That is freaking sick. I'm obsessed with that. Oh, man. That is so freaking cool. And what? We got four packs left. I freaking love this card. One of my favorite cards of all time. If you're watching and you don't understand why I'm so ecstatic about this, I love this card. When I was a kid in 1992, I bought, I think, one pack from Kmart of these. Or maybe it was two packs, whatever it was. And in the same pack, I pulled two of these were stuck together. And I think the one definitely had paper loss, if not both of them. But I was so pumped. Back then, this card was our card in 92 as a kid. Like, you're on cloud nine. And I've always loved this card ever since then. And I haven't packed pulled it in a while. I think I pulled it on maybe a, a retro wax or jam pack box a while ago. But, you know, that's probably the, this is probably the second time I've packed pulled it since 1992. So pretty freaking stoked on that. That's awesome. And I always want to get this on a PSA 10. But I think the pop on PSA 10s is like a two, maybe something like that. So I picked up an eight not long ago and settled for that. But. That's sick. Ben McDonald, CP3, and Tom Selleck. So, pretty freaking cool. Scott Bradley, Pat Kelly. Tyler Peace's nice pull <laughs> with the Dennis Cooks and Mike Walkton emoji. I guess we haven't had a we haven't had a Mike Walkton sighting tonight. I've got all from SP1 to SP6. You know, I picked up all of the other ones except the Nolan Ryan out of 93. I don't have that one yet because I'm trying to get them all slabbed. For whatever reason, I don't know why I do that. I'm not really a slab collector, but I thought it'd be cool because I wanted the the Tom Selleck in the PSA 10, but since that'll probably never happen. 
I was like, I might as, might as well, M-I-S-E, is that Creed Mark Clark? Might as well get them all slabbed. Grand Theft Henderson. Chris Paul is in the set. <laughs> Jack Armstrong and Sean Dunstan. Jerry Manley with the walk to the emoji. That thing is going to stay on there forever, though. Is that Frank Thompson in Yankees uniform? It definitely is. It's not an expensive card. You can go on eBay right now and buy it raw for a few bucks. But I said, that was like such a cool moment that I'll never forget as a kid. Like pulling that card, a short print out of a pack, and having two of them stuck together. It's like, this is freaking awesome. I am, I am, you know, completely overtaken by joy right now pulling that. So it's always had meaning to me ever since then. Not a high dollar card. I think I paid like 60 bucks for a PSA 8, but. Eventually, hopefully, I'll get a 9 and sell the 8 off, and hopefully it's one day get a 10. Mark Wohler's, but 10 will be expensive. You're better off selling or sending it in yourself. I'd be better off probably sending that myself to PSA and probably get a 9 on it or an 8. would be my luck. Low pops, you know, obviously equal very high prices. Cecil Fielder, like my 88 tops Tiffany, Jose Lean, that I think there's like a pop one of. Some guy has it on eBay and... It's like freaking 300 bucks. <laughs> like, who's going to buy that? No one is ever going to buy that card. Barry Bonds is some interesting attire. Eddie Murray, first time seeing this Lofton star rookie, though. It's also a non-rookie card. And the first time seeing Frank Thomas in the whole freaking box. I always liked that card. That was always a cool one. Thomas. Treadway. There's Phil Plantier. Mark Lee showing off his pits. Barfield. So I've seen some different faces now, at least. But still, there's that freaking Chad Curtis again. Yeah, he's got to go on the Omen list if he's not already. Back-to-back -back Archie. <laughs> so no wonder I pulled two of those Pat Listash, or those Urban Pat Listash, two of those uh, Mr. Baseballs out of the same pack. Collation was horrible. There's Pat Listash, though. Melito Perez once again... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, does he have three cards in this set? That's uh, the one we saw before. Jared Slater, what is up, man? Says, nice hit, man. Thanks so much, dude. Jared Slater, that is the creator and um, the entrepreneur behind the Retro Wax box, the Millennium box, Generation box, all those ones that I opened here. Um, that is Jared Slater. He doesn't have a channel, though. I don't think he does. He should, but I appreciate you, man. Pulled the... Pulled a couple nice rookies out of Retro Wax Box last night. Roberto Alomar probably being the best one. Looks like we have Kim Baptiste scouting reports with some sort of probably Ted Williams. No, maybe not. I guess Ted Williams can't be found in the highest series. Bench Morgan again, and not the freaking autograph. Of course, we so close, 44 or 45. This is crazy. I, I've never seen these in packs before, those inserts. Spanky LaValier, Dave Gallagher again. That card's creepy. Paul, this is definitely high number. There's Ed Whitson. Maybe, like, I've opened 100 packs. I've just never seen the Bench Morgan inserts, period. So that's kind of kind of neat to open something for all that time and then uh, still find... There's that freaking Ben McDonald again. <laughs> what, what is going on here? Gene Larkin, crab walking on that photo. I'm not sure what's going on there. Dave Winfield, Paul Ferries. There is the freaking Ben McDonald again. Never pulled this card my entire life, and now there's twice out of one box. This is an absolute pandemonium. It's still no Manny Ramirez rookie card. Brooke Jacoby, Jefferson, there's Pat Listash. I refuse to put Pat Listash on the Omen list. I was so pumped on him back in 92. I don't know if I can do that. We might have to, though. Eddie Murray, Dave Martinez again. Eddie Murray, like, on a freaking... Freaking pirate ship or something like that. Look at that. Looks like there's like some sort of island in the background and water. And there's the side of the ship. And that's definitely what it is. Eddie Murray sailing before spring training commenced. Scott Scudder has two cards in set two, apparently. And there's two back to back, which is weird. Alzi Smith, the diamond skills. The <laughs> Mark Lee, two pits on front air. <laughs> Aye, aye, Captain. We got one freaking pack left, and that is it. This has been absolute chaos with the Juan Samuel T1000 Cyborg card. The freaking Tom Selleck short print came out, which is sick. Two Ben McDonald 
inserts. And the best rookie we got is Sean Green. How's there no Manny in here? Whole box. 23 cards per pack times however many packs I open and not one Manny. Pat Mahomes starts it off. Murray's enjoying his golden years. Looks like we got Tom Goodwin in here. Everyone can jump for joy now. Greg Olson, Mark Wallers. First time seeing that card, I think. The Hebrew Hammer. Last pack mojo. I hope so. We'll see. Jose Uribe. We've seen two Bench Morgan inserts so far. Puckett, Chili Davis, Alex Cole, Eddie Murray again, Strawberry. This is the first time we're seeing that card. Mike Devereaux, or as we call him, Mike Deverex. When we were kids. Next pack, all Manny's. <laughs> Jason, Jason Grimsley. Something really creepy about that card, but his jaw is like way too long there. And his arm doesn't look real. His arm looks like it's too big for his body. It's a freaking Gumby or Stretch Armstrong, but like this card is creeping me the hell out. Is anybody else getting that vibe? Like, literally, like Clayface. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Jason Grimsley. That is creepy as hell. Ceiling tile relic. That card is an anomaly. I'm obsessed with it. His arm is way too big for the rest of his body. Freaking Clayface. Kevin Gross. Looney <laughs> it's a Looney Tune man. It's like a wax figure. It definitely is. Jason Grimsley never existed. He was a wax figure. Anthony D, what is happening? That is super creepy. <laughs> John H is just throwing John's channel on, on autoplay and fall asleep <laughs> to his dulcet tones. Wetland Mark Clark. I can't get over that Jason Grimsley wax figure. That is ridiculous. So Eric Davis, best base runner, Marquise Grissom, and Dave Martinez ends that jumbo box. I don't know what I'm more excited about, pulling that short print or this creepy-ass Jason Grimsley card. I am just completely dumbfounded by that. Or the Juan Samuel Android Cyborg card. So Sean Green, rookie card, only one of those came out of that box, the best rookie card we found the SP4 was found, and weird that two Ben McDonald inserts came out of here, and I feel like most people didn't know that card even existed, <laughs> which is super weird. But like I said before earlier, if you know what I need to boot that up, like an external A drive for a laptop to plug in through USB, post it on the Facebook page or get a hold of me directly, and we will live to see the day that Paul Heron's disc is exposed and I hope that day is very, very soon. But I do this series every single month, usually in the middle of the month. If you have a suggestion on the next box you'd like to see ripped looking for these exclusive autographs or whatever else it may be, then drop me a comment down below. And uh, I should be back tomorrow night with the uh, the Best of Both Worlds Jam Pack box. So stay tuned for that. I thank you guys all for watching and hanging out. It's always a good time. I'll see you all tomorrow night.